Now, years later, Unsolved Mysteries uncovers the cover-up. NBC Wednesday. Someone's been watching her. Someone's been terrorizing her. Thursday, Gwen comes face-to-face -face with her worst nightmare. A shocking new L.A. law, NBC Thursday. I'm Linda Loretta. If at only 25 you're one of the most popular singers of your time and you're being compared to Frank Sinatra, what could possibly ruin your day? For Harry Connick Jr., it's getting arrested at New York's Kennedy Airport. It happened to him over the holidays. Just before boarding a plane, he told authorities he had an unloaded gun in a carry-on bag. Another example that, as successful as Connick is, it's possible that more people know him by his reputation than by his music, Stone. Jane, what's interesting is that Harry Connick Jr. will tell you that he hasn't been packaged by anyone, that he drives his own image. Still, he's aware that he has a bit of an image problem, unpredictable, at times temperamental. But for all of that, Connick has an enormous following. His fans range from teens to grandmothers. And they don't care about the labels, they only see the charm. Here's what we found. And now the purple dusk of twilight time steals across the meadows of my heart. High up in the sky. The little stars climb. Oh, I've never, I've never played this. <laughs> Probably not since the 50s has a crooner captured hearts and charmed ears on the American music scene like 25-year-old Harry Connick Jr. Always reminding me that we're apart. You wander down the lane and far away. Maybe it's the smooth style, a blend of southern charm, chiseled looks, Armani suits, and slicked hair. Or is it the music, a nostalgic mix of romance and youthful energy, and his passion for the spotlight? Ladies and gentlemen, Harry Connick Jr. When they say, ladies and gentlemen, Harry Connick Jr., and you walk out, man, I just can't... I can't tell you what that feels like. It's just, I love to perform. I just, I feel like that's, it's like home in a way. It's the wrong time and the wrong place. Though your face is charming, it's the wrong face. It's not her face, such a charming face that it's all right with me. One magazine writer described you as, and I quote, a cross between a Calvin Klein obsession ad <laughs> and Jesse Helms, rakish, but clean cut, sexy, but looks responsible. He's the kind of guy you wish would marry your daughter. <laughs> that's nice. That's very nice. That's, that's quite complimentary. Does it accurately describe you, do you think? No, no, it doesn't describe me. I'm no Calvin Klein ad. <laughs> Marky Mark, he's a Calvin Klein ad. And I'm certainly not rakish. <laughs> the hell does a rakish mean? <laughs> We spent an afternoon with Harry at the Steinway Piano Showroom in Manhattan, surrounded by 15 concert grams. I mean, that New Orleans piano has this beat, like... Harry's enormous popularity has come despite critical reviews, little radio airplay, and by his own admission, the absence of a distinct musical style. This straight-laced pop star has managed to cash in on his love for 40s and 50s-style swing and jazz hits by resurrecting the sounds of the past. Now, you know, you know, I know that you do some pretty mean impersonations. Oh. Somebody told me that you do a pretty mean Judy Garland. Oh, well, you know, thank you. <laughs> like to do a little song for you now. Hope you like it. Some what? Oh, other rainbow, where I'm high. What are you doing on my piano, man? <laughs> Excuse me, Miss Garland. 
The voices of greats like Garland, Armstrong, and Bennett filled Harry's life growing up. But there was one voice he didn't like, his own. So at 17, Harry adopted that of another hero, Frank Sinatra. And I started to imitate him, and I started to try to, to be like him. And then uh, as soon as the comparison started, I stopped immediately. I put all the Sinatra records away. I said, I'll figure it out from here on out. Do a few bars of Sinatra, and then do a few bars of Harry. I mean, can you well, show I, us the difference? The cigarettes you light, one after another, uh, that won't help you forget her. You hear he goes, forget her, he'll slide up the nose. But like when I sing a, ba uh, sing a swing number, it'd be like, uh, like, um, let's fall in love. Why shouldn't we fall in love? Our hearts are made of it. Let's take a chance. Why be afraid of it? It's more of a, it's, they both it sounded pretty much identical just then. <laughs> so I, I defeated my purpose. Um, if somebody wanted to imitate Harry Connick Jr., what essential quality about you would they have to capture to do it well? I don't know. I guess you'd have to have more of an airy quality to your voice. See, people say, God, when you sing, you don't have any accent. You know, it's like all accent disappears. Like, uh, the, how's it go? How's Stardust go? Um, hmm? I can't remember You're the, the words. You're asking me? I can't remember the words. Oh. Sometimes I wonder achieved a level of commercial success not normally associated with jazz musicians. His big break came in 1989 when at age 21 he scored the hit movie When Harry Met Sally. It had to be you. It won him the first of two Grammys and so far he's had two albums go platinum. But Harry has yet to win over many of the music critics around the country. He's still dogged by comparisons to Sinatra and grumblings from jazz purists that he's overrated. If there's one criticism of you, it's, it's this. He, he borrows, he doesn't invent. Uh, it is said that your genius uh, comes not in your originality, but in your knack for bringing back the old greats. How, how, how do you respond to that, that kind of criticism? Well, I, I certainly don't agree with it. I mean, who am I imitating? I mean, Sinatra didn't arrange, so I'm not imitating him. Um, Sam Davis Jr. didn't play the piano, so I'm not imitating him. I mean, of course I borrowed from those people. I'm not denying that. But but, but the rap is that you are sort of a collection of all of those yeah. people. Oh, well, maybe and I it, am. I'm yeah. not denying it. I mean, I don't want to I don't... Maybe I am. I'm, I'm, I have to say I'm 25, and, and I got a long way to go. I'm, I'm, I'm still... So, there's so much to learn. There's really... Uh, a lot to learn. And, f and for the people who say that, I hope they'll stick around long enough to watch me grow. One person who is watching him grow is Ellis Marsalis, father of jazz stars Winton and Branford Marsalis. Ellis was one of Harry's first teachers and accompanies Harry on his latest album. The culture in New Orleans is so unique so consequently, Harry was able to absorb at a very young age a good bit of that culture in his music. The composite of Harry Connick really speaks to the best of what one could get from a city like New Orleans. Do you know what it means? To miss New Orleans. When I was growing up, uh, they had, you know, 10, 15 clubs down Bourbon Street that played New Orleans traditional jazz. And I would go down and, 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 and be a part of these clubs and, and sit in and listen and, and learn and talk to musicians and stuff like that. I just feel like I've been all over the world and I go to this one little part and I just feel like whew, this is my home, you know, this is it. Talking about more. Harry was born in 1967, started toying with music at age three, at five made his first public appearance, 
and by the time he was 11, he was a regular performer in the clubs along Bourbon Street. His father, Harry Sr., the New Orleans district attorney for the past 20 years, does some jazz singing himself and has always been Harry's idol. But his inspiration, as we discovered, is his mother, Anita. She died of cancer when Harry was 13. I remember when she died, I thought to myself, I'm, I'm just going to just dedicate everything to her because I know how proud she would have been. And, uh, and that's, that's what I try to do. Was the music comforting to you? I mean, do you think through, through your teenage years? Playing, did that help it? Mm -hmm. um, I, guess, I guess it was a distraction in many respects. Um, anything was a distraction, you know, anything, but, but you know, just, it's a, it's a grieving that um, you can't, you can't, it's just so hard to put this into words. You have a sense that she's still with you. Oh, man, no doubt about it. I mean, I know she is. I really, know, I couldn't, I don't think I'd go on if, if, if I felt that she wasn't watching, you know. For me, that's, that's, what, that's what keeps me going. It's, a, it's one of those things that makes you better jazz musician, I guess. I better be a damn good jazz musician after that. That was a rough one. Come on, baby. <laughs> what an entrance. <laughs> Have a seat. Doing? Today, there's another special woman in Harry's life, one who seems to be exerting just as much influence. Play a little, uh, would you play a little bit of Jill? Oh, sure. While she's seated. seated here. I know a girl who says she loves me, she says she needs me, and I have reason to believe her, good reason. How's that? I wrote that for Jill. Her name is Jill Goodacre, a fashion model most recognizable for the lingerie ads that launched her career. Though she knew almost nothing about jazz when they met, Jill has since directed two of Harry's music videos. Like at first you didn't know the difference between like a clarinet and a trumpet, and now you're like changing my arrangements. You look over my shoulder, I think that should be a B-flat. <laughs> Not that far. You've asked her to marry you. Yeah, I did. I, I did ask her. And, and she came up with the right answer. Man, you ain't lying. Were you nervous? Oh, was I nervous. Harry has just released two albums, 11 and 25, so named for his age when he recorded the songs featured on each of them. And it seems only fitting that the albums were released together, because Harry remains very much that precocious kid, playful and unpredictable. And at the same time, the more accomplished adult still searching for his own musical identity. I'm 25 years old, so, you know, I, I mean, I think I'm all right now, but I think when I'm 35 or 45, 55, I'm gonna start to really blossom and come into my own style, you know? I hope so, anyway. to believe that somebody with moves like that is only 25 years old. <laughs> it is. Yeah, but he's got to understand better than most that success in show business is a pretty perishable commodity, and he's got his whole life ahead of him. It must be fairly daunting. I think he does uh, appreciate that, and he also appreciates the fact that he really hasn't paid his dues the way most jazz musicians have. Uh, he grew up in an upper middle class family. When he first moved to New York City from New Orleans, when he was 18 years old, his dad subsidized his rent and his life uh, here in the Big Apple. And yet he says he hasn't been dealt a perfect hand. The loss of his mother, of course, was very difficult for Harry. And, and he just doesn't believe that poverty is necessarily a prerequisite to being a great jazz player. It gives more time to practice. That it does. Next, we'll show you why air travel may be a little safer now. <laughs> 